When I was in my early 20s, I dreamed of creating a violin. At the time, I was serving an apprenticeship with General Motors as an electrician, working with robotics and machine controllers. The idea of creating a carved violin with a robotic machine was just in my DNA. So when I got into my 50s and became serious about making violins, I said to myself, myself, make eight or nine violins by hand just to assure that you know how, and then apply the knowledge of how to make a handcrafted violin to the CNC machine process. Well, I did that. The dream of my 20s became a reality in my 50s. And then in my 60s, my direction changed and I have not really been using the CNC machine. I have created CNC models for the Stradivarius Vets, the Stradivarius Casa Vete, a 16 inch viola, and my own personal model of a 15 and a half inch five string violin based off the Casavetti models. My dreams in the earlier decades to produce an American-made violin production line just don't make sense now. The CNC system works, and now I'm looking to find a violin maker luthier who has the skill and desire to create production shop and take advantage of the work I've done with the models and the CNC machine in creating violins. This is the Probotics Asteroid. Uh, I'm going to home the machine. I just uh, I can I can either hit home here on the mount on the screen or hit Control Home, Control A, Z. Now controlling the X and the Y. This has got two motors on the Y axis, so that there isn't any cantilever in the in the. I have just a simple little tool length compensator, so when I um, measure the first tool, so there it's saying, you know, change the tool. I'm going to say, okay, change the tool. And this will go down and touch off on this limit switch, and then in the routine that I just started, it will compensate for the tool length. So when you change the tool, uh, it'll, it'll automatically compensate. This is kind of like the puck model and in the software I adjusted it. So if you look on, you can't see it here, but you can see that the um, offset for the tool is, is set. Also, I've got another little, sometimes you're working and you just want to know, uh, you know, where your zero on their bed is. And so this tool, I, and I usually run this from the command line, is uh, set zero, uh, okay. and the routine you can actually set how many millimeters this this is set at. So when I hit go here, it will go down and touch off. So now that's set to zero. So if I bring the tool down to zero. Um, I'm going to turn on the head. That's right on at zero. You can see it. So that measured exactly where the table was zero. I found when I first got this thing, I spent a lot of time um, finding out where zero was for my Z axis. Because we're violin making, basically, you put a plate on. Um, and you can see here is a, a Betts model, the interior of the back plate. Uh, I've got models for templates, etc. So this is a really nice machine because the bed is big enough for a cello. Now I've used the fingerboard because I'm an old computer geek and I prefer the fingerboard. But you can you can also um, use the. Uh, joystick thing. I don't like the joystick because you can go two directions. So I prefer the uh, moving the head with the, uh, the keystrokes. So this bed arrangement I have, I took some um, 
three eighths inch bolts flat that go into the board and put them on the back side and then I bolt this down on my table and that way I can I can surface this and make sure everything is exactly zero um, these clamps can go you know they can change to any one of these coordinates and then they can reach in and hold the plate down both the z-axis as well as the x-y axis so I went through several clamping systems before I came up with this one and I use this one just kind of like a table table saw um, I can put things through like use it like a planer but I use this like a planer like a joiner as well as the complex curves for violin making um, it's got joystick mouse keyboard and I've got a ton of models the Betts violin and the Casavette viola models here uh, both for the templates, the outlines, the outlines for the scrolls and necks. Um, quite a bit of work just in getting all that work done. Here you can see the controller on the screen and here's the uh, offset for the tools as I showed you earlier. Um, here are custom buttons that I put on uh, for various functions. Uh, you can see the Betts violin plate in there. Uh, it's a great little tool. And down here you can see the Robotics control, and here is the um, little Linux Ubuntu uh, operating system that comes with the machine. This is the current model of the Robotics Asteroid um, router. CNC router and it's 37 by 25 inches as the bed. I'm now going to show the models that I have. Here is the Betts back outside with the parallel finish. I laid the raw wood on the bed, set the z-axis to a mil, mil and a half above the bed and then do my milling work. That leaves a paper doll like cutout on the edges so when you're done you can just knock out the paper dolls. I used to use complex clamping fixtures, but this is the best way. Your main stock is clamped down, and then you just do the cutouts. Here is the inside view of the back plate. Anybody that's carved a back plate in maple understands the difficulty of that lower center part. Again, I set my Z axis about three millimeters higher than finished, and then I let the machine do the graduations and move it closer after I do some measurements until I determine it's best now to work by hand. Here is the top plate for the Betts model. Notice no button. Again, in the parallel finish. Here is the inside of the top plate. Again, the same process of setting your z-axis to determine how thick your final plate is. I also have molds that I made from the Betts CAT scans. Steve Serves provided me with the CAT scans from the Library of Congress instruments and I created the various templates and molds models from those CAT scans. So this is the Betts mold with clamping jigs and corners all cut out. Here is a neck for the Betts and it gives you the rough neck dimensions and then you, of course you would go and finish in with a sharp chisel to get a nice final hand crafted look. Here is the template for the Betts scroll neck uh, I cut these templates out of thin aluminum or formica. I actually like formica, it's got a little more weight to it. Uh, either way, an eighth inch bit, which I provide with the machine, will cut out these templates, mark the holes, scrolls, etc. 